Hip Hop since 1987.com. Hip Hop since 1987, your man Eldorado. We're live in the A right now. And this beautiful lady right here, she's one of the pioneers for, <laughs> for, for why Atlanta music is as big as it is. She goes by the name of Princess of Crime Mob. How you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. Now, first and foremost, we're going to get into this a little bit later on, but you'll be at our stage, uh, South by Southwest, this year. So we definitely appreciate you for that, and we're looking forward to that. But you got a lot of things going on. You recently came off the road. You were touring over in Germany. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about that experience. Man, Germany. Well, I was born in Germany, so okay. that was like coming home, you know, got a huge fan base over there. But um, it was good. It was good. It's just so different to see people that don't even really speak English to know crime mob songs or to even know the songs that are out now like Young Thug and they're in there and they did a lot of just to live this here lifestyle. And then you say, hey, and they'd be like, could have been a bit of a, I'm like, you was just singing, Rich Homie Kwan. Like, what's going on? So, but um, the culture is different. I love going overseas. It just really shows you how big this world is, you know? So, it's cool. I, I'm, I'm about to go back, actually. Okay. Yeah, you know. Okay. Now, as I, as I gave mention to, you were at the forefront, one of the pioneers for what we know today as Atlanta music. Mm -hmm. The new sound is jumping off with Crime Mob, the Nugged If You Buck, Rock Your Hood, things of that nature. So talk to me a little bit. What you got going on right now? Man, I'm working on this Southern Comfort um, EP. This is my baby. This is like, it's taking two years in the making because... Um, you know, doing the solo thing is kind of hard because I'm so used to being in a group atmosphere and hearing the boys and, you know, just talking about different things. But now I'm older, you know, I'm a woman, so there's stuff that I really want to talk about. So it's personal stuff on there. There's stuff for the clubs. It's stuff that the dudes can ride around to, but it hits home. Um, Southern Comfort is more about who Princess is and as an artist, as a person, as a woman, you know, as a girlfriend. And, you know, it's just all in one, you know, so it's going to be a good project. Why did you decide to come up with that title, Southern Comfort? Because I'm from the South. I was born overseas, but I was raised right here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the east side of Atlanta at that. And it's time to take it back home. You know what I'm saying? It, it has to have that crime mob sound to it, but evolved more you know the the sound the melodic sounds the tunes the beats are different but it still has that southern sound to it i grew up off of three six and you know ti and ugk and matter of fact the last time we did a south by southwest show was with ugk oh, and nice. pimp c cussed this man out while he was walking <laughs> to the stage i was like here comes pimp c he's gonna cuss but um yeah, that was the last time we did that. But everything, it just, it's just, it's a Southern feel, you know. And there are a lot of female entertainers or rappers that are out there, but they come through Atlanta and, you know, and get their stuff started. But it's time to have an Atlanta native put it back on for the female. So they told me to come back, and I was like, all right, long as the paperwork, right? I'll come back and do this thing one more time. So that's where I'm at with it. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Being one of the pioneers for Atlanta Sound and, and everything that's going on in music today here in Atlanta, what do you think of Atlanta, the current state of Atlanta music? Man, you know, it's, it's weird because... I would say around 2008, 2009, I'm like, what is this? Like, you know, when we came in and we were 15, 16, and we were looked at as little kids. Mm -hmm. Let the little kids have their show or let the kids do. You know, we wasn't on the stages with Tip and Ross and Jeezy. We was with, no disrespect, but we was with Omarion and Bow Wow, you know, for the Scream Tour. But we cry them up, so... Mm -hmm. To see the music now and everybody's having fun and everybody's dancing, um, probably a little bit too much for the rappers to be dancing. But, you know, it's fun and it's more accepted now. So it's it's cool. I mean, you know, of course, technology has boosted everything. Um, but I think every in the end, it's, it's all, you know what? No. Some of this stuff really got to go, though. <laughs> I'm trying to be politically correct. But for real, like, 
it's getting too easy now. Like there still has to be some kind of lyricism or, you know, some kind of flow. Everybody don't have to be the most lyrical or, you know, have a punchline, but it got to at least make some kind of sense. I like it got to be four bars out the song that actually makes sense and not just rhyming. I you that. know, mm -hmm. so we'll see where it goes, but the kids are the ones that request the stuff on the radio and you know so you got to listen to what they listen to and see what everybody else like in the world so you're also you're stepping out from just doing things with music i understand mm -hmm. you're also working in uh cosmetics and and beauty yeah. talk to me a little bit about that yeah so um these are my babies these are called expression locks i've partnered up with um a good friend of mine ryan g um expression red on instagram and he's been doing my hair for a year now and i always get compliments i don't care if it's male female white black young old they're always like what are those like is it real and da -da -da -da. And it can go two ways because a lot of the, you know, Rastas and stuff, they it's really a spiritual thing, you know, and it's a spiritual growth. And your locks kind of determine or signify how long you've been on your journey or whatever. And that's cool. And that's not to take away anything from them. But as far as on the beauty side of it, um, I've done ponytails and I've done braids and I've done quick weaves and everything else under the sun, but um, now I'm going back to what's healthy for our hair, you know, and protective styling. So it's really just um, teaching the younger generation that, you know, you can embrace our natural hair, the way our hair naturally grows and do styles like that. You know, so this is just the first step to introducing people that to uh, to say that, I don't have to have a sew in, you know, I don't have to ha look European, you know, with the long hair, you know, but um, we're starting the company Expression Locks or whatever, and it's in the making and we're going to manufacturing and doing all of that. So there's business meetings and shipping costs and going to warehouses and looking at all of that. So it's a process. Okay, okay. It's a process coming to a store near you. <laughs> <laughs> now, back to this music. Mm -hmm. I got to know, Crime Mob, we're waiting for a reunion. Yeah. What can we do to put that put that in motion? I mean, um, well, we're, we'll see about the future, but right now we're just basking in the glory and the grace that God has given us that we are finally over our last deal. Amen. You know, we were in litigation for eight years. <laughs> You know, a lot of people um, think that you just do a record, go in a studio and shoot a video and then you're just famous, you know. And even after the song breaks, you still have stuff that you have to deal with. So with these eight years, we were fighting for our publishing. We were fighting for um, creative control, rights, money that had been made, you know, in 2007. We just got that yesterday. You know, so that's like going to work every day for eight years and not getting paid. But you still got to get up. You still got to go to work. Meanwhile, people think it's about, oh, such and such fell off or, oh, they're not doing anything anymore. But I took it to where I could still go to work every day and not get paid or I can do other things like write for your, fam your favorite rappers, rappers or um, singers. And um, doing doing some ghost writing for people and um, doing acting, also the stage plays and stuff, and waiting on my business to get to where it needs to be and then make the moves in the industry, back into the music industry. So that's where we're at with it now. Um, God is good. We are out of the deal. I'm a free agent. I might take my talents down to South Beach now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like doing a big press conference because it's been eight long years, you know, off of songs that went platinum and ringtones and downloads. And, you know, even looking at the check, it was like, wow, eight years for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's all about them handcuffs being off of me now so that's the biggest thing you know so once we're out of all of our happiness then we can sit down as a group and say okay now what do we really want to do and it not just be we know we can sell the records all we need is is diamond and princess cool 
let's get them together, let's get them in the studio. Da, da, da. That's the easy part. But us actually meshing eight years later, that's the part that, you know, it's going to take some time. So we'll see. Let's get back to what you currently have going on with Southern Comfort. Talk to us a little bit. I understand you have some things going on with producer Black Elvis. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us. Let us know about that. And also let us know about some features that we could possibly, uh, you know, look forward to with your new project. Okay. Well, first, the amazing Elvis. Um, man, it's just, it's good to see producers that really do it for the music. It's not about doing a split sheet or such and such did this and I need my cut for that. It's really just about the music. And with Elvis, I've learned so much in the time that I've been working with him, just seeing him and him and his vibe, and he'll get to shaking his head and stuff. And it's like, man, every because every producer works differently. Lil J is my blood brother, and he's done Nucky V Buck and Rock Your Hips and um, Get Crunk for Bo Hagen and everything. And he works in his own way, and I've been used to that for so long. So to come in here and see Elvis piece things together and the engineer working with them, and he's like, no, we're gonna make the hi-hat go like this, and we're gonna double that back, and I'm like, wow. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's producer talk, you know? So I'm learning a lot with that. And then just being around so many talented artists, you know, we're in a space where, I just look around sometimes like, man, like five years from now, we're going to all be at the Grammys and stuff and just laughing about, remember the time we was at the studio? And it's like a good energy that's bubbling with just creativity. And man, the music that's being made right now, I'm trying to tell you, it was got him some, some stuff okay. under them sleeves, man. He really does. But um, yeah, we're working on a couple of songs um, as far as, <sighs> features. Um, oh, yeah, some music with Scotty ATL. Yeah, you know, Scotty cool. did his. You Chris know what? Skyler. Scotty made me rewrite my verse. Damn. I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty made me rewrite my verse. The song is called Entertain You, and okay. it's basically, you know, I'm in a relationship, and the dude is always going out, and it's cool. He goes out to have fun. He needs to have his fun, but tonight, I don't want you to go out. I want you to stay here. We could turn the house into the club, and I'll be the waitress, and I'll be the dancer, and, you know, so we're just having fun with that. So my initial verse was cool, but then I, I took it to Scotty and everything, and he did his, and I was like, hmm. Yeah, so let me go back in and rewrite <laughs> because I love his rhyme scheme and his flows and stuff, and um, he attacked it just the way I wanted him to, and I was like, okay, yeah, now I can go back in and add this and do that, so that's going to be a nice one. Okay, okay. That's a good one to watch. Scott is a good artist, man. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely doing his thing for North Carolina be, as well. He's going to be one of them ones, like, 10 years from now, it'll just be, like, huge. Not even 10 years from now, but he's going to be huge. Um, as far as other features, I'm not really sure which songs we're going with yet, okay. but I've been in the studio with a couple of people, so we'll see. Now, let, For the people that will be in Austin uh, on March 21st, tell us a little bit about what we can expect. You know, We're, we're anxious to see exactly what you're going to give us on that stage, <laughs> so, so let us know. Let us know a little bit of your secrets. Um, I'm a performer at heart. I don't care if it's three people in a club or it's 3,000. I just love to perform. So, um, of course, you're going to get the old, I mean, the classic. <laughs> you're going to get the nugget few bucks and the, and the rocky hips and stilettos or whatever. But you're also going to get commas, which is, you know, a song about I'm just not going to move unless I see commas. You know, like, I haven't moved until I saw some commas. <laughs> so you're going to see that one. Um, it's a couple of other songs. I got a song called Hymn 717. And uh, that's like, I'm just straight rapping for like five minutes. You know, and it's it's just different rhyme schemes and flows. And it just goes all over the place. So I'm thinking about start starting to show off with that. Okay. Just to, it's... It's going to be nice. It's going to be real nice. So make sure y'all tune in and turn up or get left out. So as the year 2015 continues, we know you have a new project that will be coming out soon, Southern Comfort. We know you're also doing your thing as far as the expression locks. You'll be performing on our South by Southwest stage. What else can we expect from Princess as the year moves along? Woo, um, I have an S2S brand that's coming out. 
is in the very, very, very early stages. But um, S to S is really um, the Surrender to Your Sexy, which is uh, the Intimate Apparel line. Um, Surrender to Your Sweat is the Athletic line. So it'd be like sports bras and, you know, just, you know, little cute boy shorts and stuff. But they'll be more for the curvy chicks, you know, how... Some people can go into the gym with shorts that are this little and cover everything. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, I might want to one day, but I have to find enough material that covers everything. So we working on that. But um, the S to S brand, um, I also do artist consulting and stuff. So doing that, uh, uh, Preach Man, look out for that one. That's. Has Elvis told you about that one yet? I, I heard a, a briefly about it. Man, I'm trying to tell you. That <laughs> is, that's going to shake the world because it's something that needs to be said okay. and heard. So that'll be out. Um, shout out to Charmaine and Black Elvis. Um, just grinding, you know, interviews, shows, touring, music, getting back into acting. Shout out to Juanita Biden. We did a stage play together. Um, so, yeah, just always being a student of art. If people want to stay in tune with your movement via social media, how do they go about doing so? Instagram.com slash Princess Digital. Twitter. Well, of course, y'all know dot com. But <laughs> <laughs> um, everything is Princess Digital. Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. I don't do all the other ones, the kicks and the kicks, and that's just too no many. Snapchat. No, Man, no, no, no Snapchats. No, no Tinder. <laughs> Somebody asked me that the other day, and I was like, Tinder? What? And it was like, are you on Tinder? I was like, no. Is that like the newest one? It was like, yeah, you need to get on it. Yeah, it's that's like, new this week. It'd be something else next week. It was an old man, though. I don't know. <laughs> you think he was trying to holler? Yeah, that was a weak line if he was trying to holler, though. <laughs> that was all the week. Dang. <laughs> I was being friendly to him, too. Y'all know what it is. Hip Hop since 1987. We live in the A with this beautiful young lady. It goes by the name of Princess. Make sure if you're in Austin, Texas on March 21st, you swing by and catch her on our stage. And stay tuned to Hip Hop since 1987 for a lot more from this young lady. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hip Hop You've been dropping dope records consistently, man. I'm um, satisfying your fans. When can we expect that album? Can we talk on any features, production? What's yeah, going we, on? We, we, we really wrapping up right now, man. Okay. We, we, looking, we looking at May. So you're on the tail end of May. That's all I like yeah. to hear. You have a title for it? Remember my name. Remember my name. There you go. There you go. <laughs>